Today's problem, my glass is always dirty. What should I do? We have the top 10 things that will get you past this. This is BRS TV Problem Solvers. If dirty glass and you have to clean it all the time is your problem, this video is the solution, starting with number one. All right, you should decide today what a win looks like for your clean glass. If you're cleaning it every two days, something might be wrong, but if you're cleaning it every two weeks, lucky you. But somewhere in between is a gulf that you should have and you should aim for it. Yeah, so a big thing is just understanding when you've won, yeah. right? Uh, and again, if you're going every twice a month that you have to clean it, there is, you're doing something right here. <laughs> uh, but if you're cleaning it every single day or every two days, you're doing something wrong and today's video is gonna solve that for you. All right, number two, stop the use of dissolved or powdered foods if you're cleaning the glass constantly because these types of foods that are either like fine particulate powders mm -hmm. or even dissolved tend to fuel that type of algae growth when there isn't enough coral to soak it up. Yeah, so you may be feeding your fish and you may have heard, you know, feed enough so that it doesn't go down the overflow. And these are large pellets, large pieces of food that you can actually visibly see floating around the tank. When you broadcast feed or when you feed these dissolved or powdered food, tiny, minute little particles, there is no way that your corals are getting every single last bit, which means eventually they'll end up breaking down in the tank. In fact, they break down pretty fast. Mm. The dissolved ones are near broken down already, and the tiny little powdered particulate foods are going to break down into nitrogen and phosphorus really rapidly and become available to the uh, algae grown on the glass much, much faster. So this is a common issue in the beginning stages of a new tank. You read somewhere and you to feed the corals. Well, mm -hmm. you do, but do it when the corals are robust and they're going to be the primary uptake of those nutrients, not in the beginning. So if you're feeding a bunch of those foods and you're seeing lots of algae growth, just stop. Number three, a lot of times you're just making it harder on yourself, so make it easier in choosing the glass cleaner that works best for your problem. In which case, there's three options, sometimes a hybrid of them. There's a sharper blade, a wider blade, or a stronger magnet. Yeah, so with the tunes, you actually get that like razor blade. So mm. there's a lot of them that have like a metal blade of some kind in there, but it's not actually sharp. With the tunes, when you'll see there's an actual razor blade in there. And because of that, just goes through mm. almost anything on the glass. Really sharp. Uh, obviously, there's a little bit of uh, like a health hazard with a razor blade. Make <laughs> sure you don't cut yourself with it but sharpness really counts. Yeah, uh, the next one, wider blade, meaning if you have a big giant tank, like a six foot pane by like 20 some inches tall, that little tiny scraper that's you know only an inch and a half or two inches long, it's gonna take you forever to clean the glass, in which case there are wider blades out there. Flipper has a wider blade and, uh, and that means you can just cover more real estate more quickly. Yeah, I mean, like, do the math. I have a two inch blade versus a four inch blade. It's gonna take me twice as long to clean the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I also say that in relation to the strength of the magnet. Yeah. Uh, so this is where LG Free really shines. Uh, mm -hmm. And so these things are super duper strong. Like uh, a lot of the other ones out there are kind of the bare minimum for the glass uh, thickness, thickness yeah. that they suggest. The LG Free never go above. Uh, you will regret it, it'd be really hard to move. Uh, so the LG Free though, strength, and where strength really matters is about how many passes you have to yep. do. So if I can have a four inch blade, that's really great. But if I had to do 14 passes to scrub it off, it isn't really all that helpful. However, if I can have the strength of that magnet that allows me to do it in a single pass, it's actually 15 times faster than you know, shaking it fast uh, back and forth. And sometimes you will actually find people uh, doing hybrid methods, meaning doing things like using the razor blade with the care magnet and then attaching it to the outside portion of uh, the uh, LG Free magnets and really getting it in one single pass, easy, fluid, and making it easy really is part of the solution to keeping your glass clean. Number four, Try bacteria. I know this sounds kind of strange. The bacteria is going to keep all the glass uh, clean, <laughs> but it's true. Yeah, so vibrant being one of the most popular ways of doing this. And it's just think about bacteria going out there, especially ones that like to eat algae. Would that not mean that my glass is cleaner? Absolutely. So give it a try. 
In fact, this was uh, the Vibrant was actually designed by a tank maintenance company yes. who found that when they came every uh, week, the tanks looked awesome. And when they came every two weeks, they had already clouded over a little bit and didn't look awesome. They created the bacterial solution so that they look awesome all the time. <laughs> and so when we said earlier that uh, if you only have to clean your glass every two weeks, you're lucky. Nope. Sometimes you're just doing the right thing. Number five, the power of the sun above your tank is probably the fueling the problem because algae is photosynthetic, in which case the more light you give it, the more algae you get. So consider adjusting your light intensity. You know, fish only tanks probably doesn't need as much light or only when you're home. You know, LPS corals, predominantly lower part and lower light. Uh, SPS dominated systems, higher light, but you don't have to be on the razor's edge. Yeah, so like if you fish only tank, maybe the lights only need to be on when you're home, yeah. right? Uh, and uh, if you have uh, other tanks, if you're planning a tank and you're like, ah, maybe I like LPS tank, maybe I like mm -hmm. an SPS tank, we'll know that the LPS tank, uh, because the 75 par versus uh, 300, it's gonna grow algae way, 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 way slower. <laughs> uh, and so you really don't have to worry about it as much. That be maybe part of uh, how you consider what you wanna set up. But also, there's a difference between 250 par and 350 par that your corals might not actually notice all that much, but you're cleaning the glass, you know, 30% more often. So think about how that, that all works together. There's one piece of it is if you get a lot of spill light directly aimed at the glass, it's going to grow corals or, or uh, algae faster. Now, the part about that is, is for SBS corals, you really want that refracted light back in. But for something like an LPS tank, maybe you want to use a light that doesn't hit the glass as much and doesn't grow as much algae. Number six is actually just that, adjust the lighting's height, meaning that if you move the light closer to the tank, the narrow angle of the light will prevent some of it from hitting the glass. Now again, for SPS, I really, really like to see it bounce off the glass and back in and eliminate all those shadows and dead spots. But if you're just doing something that doesn't require a lot of light, consider how you might want to have that light not pound the glass, which means that it won't grow as much algae on the glass. Number seven, somebody told you that the snails are going to keep your glass meticulously clean, only to find out I can see their trails from across the living room. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of people will tell you to use snails to keep your glass clean. <laughs> I have never in my entire life seen a snail that is capable of keeping the glass pristine. And in fact, what would have been a light little misting of green that I might not have been able to see before, mm. once you put the little trail of what it eats <laughs> through it, I can certainly see that, and it actually makes it look worse. So it's not that you shouldn't have snails in the tank, just don't think of snails as the solution for keeping the glass clean. Number eight, perfect your feeding, uh, meaning the amount you use and how it's eaten. So a lot of the things that are gonna feed the, the growth of the algae in there are gonna be the foods that you put in. So if you use things like the feed mode, which stops all the pumps and mm -hmm. you can sprinkle the food in and they get a vast, vast majority of it, having, rather than having it like blow behind the rocks, over the overflow, getting just uh, caught in the sump mm -hmm. or anywhere else, if you can get it into their mouths, you can actually feed half as much while still getting the same amount of true nutrition to the fish and that means less of it is going to feed the algae growth and other things like feeding portals as well. Big, big deal. The feeding portal will also allow, specifically with uh, frozen foods, if you just toss it in, allows it to slowly drizzle out and allows the fish to get more of the food, less of the waste, less of the algae and less cleaning glass. Number nine, you're also going to perfect the three-stage filter, starting filter number one, mechanical, filter two, organic, like your protein skimmer, and filter three, the nitrate and phosphate that's left over, typically done with a scrubber or refugium. Yeah, so mechanical, pulling out the whole turd, pulling out the whole uneaten shrimp or uh, pellet food. Just gonna pull it right out with a filter sock, gonna pull it right out with uh, your roller mat and almost mm. in real time. If that misses it, the broken down organics, the skimmer is gonna pull out. If the skimmer misses it, now you have uh, uh, small molecules of nitrogen or nitrate and phosphate in the tank, in which case things like bacteria and carbon dosing, or uh, more commonly scrubbers and refugium will suck up all that excess nitrogen and phosphate, grow algae in the sump rather than on the glass.
So the solution is take all three stages more seriously, meaning that if I have all that uneaten food and waste in the tank and the filter socks are capturing it, replace the filter socks, preferably every three days. If I'm not gonna ever, don't let it just rot in there and take the filter socks out, maybe replace them with mesh and then allow the skimmer to do its job and it will pull out more of that waste rather than letting it all break down. And then actually care about how the skimmer works. You know, figure out, we have some videos on how you can tune it. It isn't just that valve there on the side. You can create wet or dry foam by adjusting how the foam engine actually works. But then after that, think about the nitrogen and phosphorus because all of this stuff feeds that algae on your glass. And if you don't care about it, it's just gonna grow way, way faster. Number 10, this isn't the solution to the whole thing, but it can definitely slow it way down, UV. Yeah, so there's a lot of UV options out there. You can some hang-on versions, some smaller versions, some that are big, but you may permanently mount them. Uh, but these things, you know, if everything else isn't working, you might want to consider UV to help slow down the growth. So UV will not prevent LG from entering the tank or taking root in the rocks or anything like that. But what it will do is prevent it from spreading as fast. Mm -hmm. And essentially what's happening on that glass, and you notice it, is when it spreads fast. So if we can slow down how fast it spreads, you can also slow down how frequently you need to clean the glass. All right, dirty glass problem solved, but what's next? What's next is that tuning your protein skimmer isn't just the gate valve. Check out the investigates we did right over here. And a fish first approach to uh, managing how you feed your tank and all the nutrients that build up from that, there is a balance and it's right here.